hi everyone in this video I'll be demonstrating then how to draw a beam from a shear force diagram or how to reverse a shear force diagram so we are starting then with a shear force diagram already labeled the shear force diagram is or the beam is a b c d e so then there is five important points on the shear force diagram or on the beam that I must take note of and every time I'll be using then these points to ask what uh, was happening at that specific point. The, the points are very important. Also note the distances because then uh, the distances especially where you have a shear force diagram the distances are important. So for engineering science entry then the shear force diagram was drawn starting from the left moving towards the right so then when we are reversing we also do the same then and then we bear in mind what happened at each point what what uh, caused whatever a, a movement that was there at that particular point then we will then use that to draw our beam so now i'm going to start at point a i say at point a i moved from zero because every shear force diagram has a baseline, so then our baseline is zero. So we moved from zero and we w went up to 19.2 kilonewtons. So then at point A then, the reason why we moved up, it's because there is a reaction. It's only a reaction that causes a positive shear force. So therefore at point A, there is a reaction. So that reaction is called A or it's called the left reaction and then its magnitude is 19.2 kilonewtons. So the reaction at A is 19.2 kilonewtons, the same as the distance or the height of the shear force diagram. So that is why then we moved up. Then we say between A and B, we move from 19.2 to minus 4.8. So since we moved down using a slope line, then we know that then between A and B, this indicates that there is a UTL. So then we go ahead and then draw between U A and B, we are drawing a UTL because then we went down with a slope line. Then we now need to find uh, the, U, the, the, the scale of the UTL. We know that the length between A and B is 6 meters. It's indicated there, it's labeled. So now we say, uh, how did uh, they draw this shear force diagram? In order to calculate the principal points from the intercept of 19.2, in order to calculate this 4.8, the calculation said 19.2 is my starting point minus then the scale of the UTL, I'll call it X now, it's what is missing, times the spread of the UTL, and the spread is 6 meters. And that gave us an answer of negative 4.8. So now, applying maths, I move negative 4.8 to this side, I move negative 6X to the other side, so when I add 4.8 to 19.2, I'll get 24. I divide 24 by 6. Therefore, I will get an answer of x is equals to 4 newtons. So in this case, then, it is 4 kilonewtons for every meter. And that is the scale of the UTA. Okay? So... Another way of calculating this, uh, if you want to use a simple met me method, is to say what is the distance or what is the, the gap between 19.2 and negative 4.8. Negative so because you are looking for the difference, you add the two values. When you add them, 19.2 plus 4.8, you, you get uh, 24. Then 24 you divide by the length between A and B, which is 6. So 24 divided by 6 gives you 4, and then that is your scale. Okay? We move on. Now I'm at B. So at B, we move from negative 
4.8 to negative 24. The only reason why we have a vertical line going down in a Schaeffer's diagram is because the of a point load. So we go ahead and draw a point load at point B. So now at B I have a point load and now we need the magnitude of the point load. So then the point load takes me from 4.8 to negative 24. So initially when it was calculated they said negative 4.8 minus the point load, I can call it x, equals negative 24.8. So I move this 24, negative 4.8 to the other side, it will become positive. When I subtract it, I will get then negative x is equals to negative 20. Therefore, x is equals to 20. Therefore, 20 is my magnitude of the point load, 20 kilonewtons. Another way is saying what is then the difference or what is the gap from between negative 24.8 and negative 4.8. So you take 24.8, you subtract with a negative, so then you will end up with a minus minus and the, which is a plus. So then minus 24.8 plus 4.8 you end up with a positive 20. So then that is the the magnitude of the point load that took me from negative 4.8 to negative 24.8. Okay? Between B and C, I move from 24.8 to negative 32 in a slope line. So it already indicates to me that there is a UTL. So then that UTL could be different from the first one, could be the same. So because we don't know, I will then use a different color in order to indicate that UTL. So let's go ahead and draw that UTL. So then we have a UTL between point B and point C. So then that UTL is there. Now we need to get the weight. The distribution is for 2 meters. So now I just need the difference between negative 32.8 and negative 24.8, and then I will divide it by 2. So in my calculations, how did they get negative 32.8? They started with an intercept of negative 24.8. Then they subtracted the UTL, which was x, the scale is unknown, multiplied by the distribution which was 2 meters, and the answer they got was negative 32.8. So now I need to find x, then I move 24.8 to the other side, it becomes positive, then I say 32, negative 32 plus 24.8, I get a negative uh, uh, 12, then I divide uh, 12 by 2, then I'll get uh, so it's not it's not 12 it's 8 then I get divide 8 by 2 I'll get 4 so now I see that the the UTL that I have here is 4 kilonewtons per meter so then it is the same UTL that I had from A to B okay we continue now I'm at point C at point C I do not go up vertically, I do not go down vertically. So therefore it means that there is no point load and there is no reaction, right? I move to the next point which is between C and D. 